So to help you learn the course material, we will be making use of an online homework system called Mastering Physics. The purpose of this video is to help you get started using Mastering Physics. So uh, you'll need two things. You'll need, uh, first of all, a Mastering Physics account. That's mostly what this video is about. And secondly, you'll need the code for the course that you're registered in this semester. So, and that changes from semester to semester. So down in the comments section below of this video, I have typed in uh, the, the code for this course. You, you can look for it there. So your account. If you have already set up a Mastering Physics account in the past, you should still be able to log on to it. If it's, uh, if it's a really old account, like more than two years old, you, it might not be valid anymore, but come by and see me, we can uh, extend the account. You should only have to buy Mastering Physics once in your lifetime. If you do not yet have a Mastering Physics account, you have to create one, and it's not free. So in order to do it, you must purchase an access code, and the access code comes with a new textbook. There's also a way to just purchase an access code from Mastering Physics uh, on, online on their website. So I'll go through both of those things. Okay, so start by opening up your favorite browser and typing www.masteringphysics.com. So you'll see the screen. Uh, click on Student. Next, you click on In US or Canada, since we're in Canada. It asks you if you have a course ID from your instructor. You can click yes, and again, uh, you can find that uh, course ID in the comments section below. And the next question is, do you have an access code? And remember, there's two ways you can get an access code. The first way we'll go through is if you have recently bought a new textbook. When you buy a new textbook, it comes shrink-wrapped, and you take, out, take off the shrink-wrap, what should come out is an envelope like this one that says Mastering Physics uh, Student Access Code Card. And what you do is you rip it open, well, get into it here, rip it open and it'll say your access code. You pull it and it gives you a big long uh, code which you then have to type in. So back to the computer, you click yes I have an access code. The next screen is a license agreement and privacy policy, so you can read through that if you like, but you eventually have to click I accept. Next you're in to access information. It asks, do you have a Pearson education account? If you're new, you will say no. Login name, uh, it suggests that you use your email address. I would suggest that you use your uToronto email address for your login name. Then you need to create a password, uh, type it twice. And last, it asks for this access code, which you can read off your card. Uh, it's a whole lot of letters, takes a little while to type there. Some of them are text. And then you click on, scroll down, click on next. So the next screen is account information. The first question it asks is first and last name. And uh, could you please put in your first and last name as per Rosie, or your official first and last name. Don't use a, uh, a nickname here. Next it asks for email address. Again, please use your uToronto email address. You type it twice. Uh, next is school location. You can select Canada, Ontario, and I would, you know, University of Toronto, St. George. There's a security question, I can put that in, uh, click next, and now you can log in to Mastering Physics. And you just uh, click log in now. Okay, now I want to back up a little bit, and remember when I asked you if you have an access code, let's go through the steps if uh, you did not buy a brand new textbook and you need to buy an access code online. So you would click no, uh, click the textbook we're using. Uh, it might be Knight Physics for Scientists Engineers 3rd Edition. Do you want an e-text? I would answer here uh, no. You don't want to purchase an e-text because that costs extra. And clicking next. From here on, you go through that privacy policy again. It lets you know that mastering physics without the e-text is going to cost $66. You have to create your account name again. Uh, answer those questions about yourself, and then it gets you to payment information. Uh, you have to enter in a credit card here, and then you basically are back uh, to where you started to log into Mastering Physics. 
So the first time you log into Mastering Physics, you have to join the online course. And it asks you, did you receive a course ID from your instructor? And again, this is the one that we give you in class, and it's also in the comments section down below, so type that. The next question is, it should ask, please enter your UTOR ID. This is your alphanumeric UTOR ID based on your last name, which is also on your student card. So uh, for me, that's Harlow JA. For you, it might, be, uh, might have some numbers in it. Um, so be careful to type that properly so that you get your marks. And next, you'll see you're actually in the course. And so it gives you the name of the course there, some announcements. There's a course calendar down there, and you can see individual assignments there. And their position is based on their deadline, when they're due. Uh, if you click on View All Assignments, you see now a list view of all the assignments that are available for you to work on right now. And one of these assignments is actually not worth marks. It's called Introduction to Mastering Physics. If you click on that, it's a, uh, it's a series of questions which aren't very much physics related. The first question is about how many squares are there there. You can click on four if you want number of squares, one, two, three, four. Uh, that actually turns out to be wrong because you forgot the big square, so there's actually five. But this, uh, the purpose of the Introduction to Mastering Physics assignment is to give you practice on just how to use Mastering Physics, uh, how to use the hints, um, how to type in uh, symbols and um, expo exponents and that kind of thing. So that's a good one to go through. Uh, going back, you can also see uh, there's a pre-class quiz here, so let's take a look at that. So actually, what's a pre-class quiz? Well, uh, in this course, uh, we like you to read ahead. So a pre-class quiz is actually due um, on 8 a.m. on the morning before uh, a lecture. And it's based on the material we're going to be doing that day. So you need to uh, open up your chapter, read ahead a little bit, and you'll see these questions here are actually pretty simple questions based on the reading. Uh, here's the first question. Uh, it's about motion diagrams. And when you click on the answer, you, uh, you don't actually see if you're right or wrong at this point. But that's actually by design because the whole point is that you're supposed to be coming to class and we'll, we'll let you know in, in class uh, which, what was right and what was wrong. So once you've done all the questions, the last question says, uh, what topics of your assigned reading did you find most confusing and could be explained in lecture? Uh, essay, this is an essay answer, so you can type in there um, whatever you want. You could type, I find vector addition to be confusing. Can you go over it in lecture, please? Uh, thanks. And then the next question is, uh, what topics did you find most interesting? I find significant figures to be interesting. Uh, who knew there were so many rules? about rounding. You can type whatever you want there, submit uh, your essays, and we will go through and read them, and uh, we can use some of your feedback to, to help us in lectures. That's why these are due at 8 a.m., and so we have time uh, before the 11 a.m. class to incorporate some of your comments uh, into our lectures. Okay, and lastly, we get to the whole point of Mastering Physics, which are these homeworks. And uh, the homeworks are the ones that you should be spending three or four hours a week working on. And you'll notice that the deadline there is actually about two weeks after we start it. So it's after it's been covered in lectures and after it's been covered in practicals. And the questions are pretty involved. Um, some of them you'll find that you have to actually get a piece of paper and your calculator and uh, work it out. Um, not on the computer and then go back and type it in and I, I definitely encourage you to do this um, you know there's not going to be any computers during the test or final exam so you need to have a lot of practice uh, picking up a pen and uh, applying it to paper and working through things that way so every problem set has a grading policy which I would encourage you to read through it tells you how you get credit uh, what happens if you submit a problem set late etc uh, you can click on scores, which will let you know the details of what marks you've gotten. Uh, you can click on e-text. Uh, if your Mastering Physics comes with e-text, then uh, you'll see that there's a PDF of the entire textbook that you can access that way. So if you forget your textbook when you come to practicals, you can log on to Mastering Physics on the computer there and view the, the whole book on PDF, which is kind of handy. Okay, I hope that gets you started on Mastering Physics. Uh, I believe that if you take the time to do your problem sets every week, sit down somewhere where you're in a distraction-free environment, if you
you spend three or four hours on these problem sets each week uh, with your textbook there and with paper and pencil ready, I think you'll learn a lot of physics. Uh, two uh, quick pitfalls to try to avoid. First of all, well, first of all, the interface for mastering physics can be a little quirky when you type in uh, symbols and things. Sometimes you have to have, use a pull-down menu to find Greek letters and things. So try not to get frustrated with the syntax. And sometimes when you submit an answer, it says that it's wrong, but really it was right, but you just typed it wrong or you put the parentheses in the wrong way. So keep in mind that the, after a couple of weeks of doing this, after you've submitted the first couple of problem sets, it, that part of it will get easier and you'll be used to the syntax and you won't run into the small technical difficulties. Uh, the second pitfall is just to try to leave yourself enough time so that you can think about the material, you can answer it and learn for yourself. This is a study tool. We will be putting uh, problems similar to mastering, mastering physics problems on the tests and on the final exam. And if you've done the work yourself and spent the time to understand it, it it's going to really help you. If you leave it to the last minute and over collaborate with your friends and you know, copy or something like that from someone else who did it, it is possible to cheat on mastering physics and kind of get the, get the marks without really understanding it uh, fairly easily. But I, I strongly discourage you uh, from, from going down that road. Uh, it's, uh, it's a great system if you have the time to, uh, to use it properly. And I hope that, uh, that you'll learn a lot from using it this semester. So good luck, and if you have any uh, issues with it, please send me an email or you can drop by my office and uh, I'll try to, try to help with, uh, especially with the little technical problems at the beginning, we can get those sorted out.